So the curse of the Battlefront franchise continues with the classic collection launching as a complete and utter mess. And boy, are people unhappy with Aspire Media. Hey guys, it's Twisted and welcome back to another Battlefront Classic Collection video. Today we have to talk about the absolute nightmare fuel that is the launch of this game and all of the backlash that Aspire Media is copying along with it. Now, there's a few things I want to go over in this video, including some news that just surfaced a few hours ago, and I'll get to that in just a minute, so be sure to stay tuned. Now, let's look at the Battlefront Classic Collection as a whole to start off. Take a fantastic game, an all-time classic, if you will, upscale the graphics, and add huge multiplayer support, and relaunch. Seems simple enough, right? What could go wrong? Well, apparently it's not that simple, because this game has been an absolute hot mess since it launched. Aspire Media, who were tasked with bringing us the classic collection, have somehow managed to cook the main thing everyone was excited about, which was the online multiplayer. Like yeah, instant action is cool, and the story mode is fantastic, and they seem to work fine in the game from what I'm aware of, but the online multiplayer is damn near unplayable. On launch day, there was laggy servers, game crashes left and right, terrible hit registration, and to top it all off, there was like three servers to join totaling under 200 players, with like 10,000 people trying to play this game. Now keep in mind, this game had the second highest pre-order numbers on Steam recently, so clearly they knew that more than 200 people would be playing. Like, there was literally one job here. Have a functioning and smooth multiplayer experience, because otherwise, if you were just going to play instant action and the campaign, why not buy just the classic version of Battlefront 2, so that you could just go and play those. It would be a quarter of the price and you'd still be able to play it. Yes, the campaign sells itself because the stories from the 501st are incredible, and yet they still managed to ruin this too by apparently cutting like some of the 501st journal cutscenes, which is ultimately what builds up the story to make it what it is. Now, hopefully these cutscenes do get added back in. I haven't seen an update as to whether that has happened, but if they're going to continue working on this game, you need to add all the cutscenes in. You can't shortcut it, and if they do and it stays this way, guys, if you're thinking about buying this, do not buy it. Just go and get Battlefront 2 Classic on the store. It's going to cost you a third, if not a quarter of the price. Sometimes you can get it as cheap as like five bucks on Steam when it's on sale. So I would go and get that instead of this if you're just planning on playing offline. So... Obviously, the online multiplayer is cooked, and Aspire has put out a statement barely even apologizing, and the game is still a mess a week later. I've seen a few people say that some of the issues have been kind of resolved, but personally, I'm still hesitant to jump into the game and try it. Believe me, am I glad I got this game for free. Now, I do appreciate Aspire sending me a review copy of the game, and I really do want them to know that I appreciate it with everything but I'm always going to be honest about my opinion on things, and this is definitely no different. If I had purchased this game, I would have been refunding it. I've seen creators who were so excited to cover this game for the next few months, pretty much already moving on and have either returned to the EA Battlefront 2 or just branched out to other games entirely, which says something about the state of the Battlefront Classic Collection. After watching videos from other creators as well as my own experience with the game, Crashing also seemed to be one of the major issues. Players were being booted from the game a few minutes into each match, leaving multiplayer pretty much unplayable for everyone. Like, how annoying would it have been if you're one of the people who was so excited to play this, but you took the time off work or you stayed home from school, cancelled plans with your friends or whatever it might have been, just to play some brilliant nostalgia online and then get greeted with this clunky mess of a game? Like, how do you manage to take a 20-year-old game and make it worse than it was previously? I guess it's the old saying, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. I know what they were trying to do, but clearly they weren't ready to do it, and they probably shouldn't have launched when they did, because it's now just become a complete clusterfuck. Now, moving on from the launch and jumping into more drama that was revealed just a few hours ago, we need to talk about mods. Now, when the Classic Collection trailer launched, there was a bit of controversy surrounding the use of a fan-developed mod on some of the hero characters in where Asajj Ventress was using different animations that was actually created by the modding community. Now, Aspire did make a statement on it that was simply a placeholder in the actual trailer, and it wasn't intended to be used in the final version of the game. 
However, on the Nintendo Switch version of the game, apparently players and the modding community have now discovered that Aspire is still using mods created by the community with no credit, no compensation, nothing. Now, personally, I don't know what goes into modding, but I'm sure it is a lot of work to get everything to function properly, kind of what Aspire should be doing right now. But why take creative works from the community and use them in your game when clearly you probably have all of the assets you need to make a functioning game? Why need to use somebody else's creative works? It just doesn't make sense to me. The creator of this mod made a statement on Twitter that said the Switch version uses his exact mods with the exact same bugs and glitches that his mod has. It's even been data mined and shows the exact same files other than the attack animations. It really is sad to see creators being taken advantage of and that's exactly what this is. I really do hope the Battlefront Classic Collection smooths out and people play it but they definitely need to get onto apologizing and giving credit where credit is due to the modding community. However, at this stage, by the time they fix the game, I would assume most people have probably moved on. I spoke about this before launch where the attention span is short for people these days, and if you don't catch their attention right away, they're going to move on to the next thing. Take EA Battlefront 2, for example. People still think it's full of microtransactions because they played it for a few hours at launch and then refunded it never to play it again. So if that's the case with these games, this game is pretty much dead already. I think it really is sad to see, but it's safe to say that the Battlefront franchise could be dead at this point, and the only thing that would save it is Battlefront 3. 